Hello, everybody. You're listening to Those Are the Girls with Mallory and Friends. I'm Mallory. I'm Victoria. And we are changing culture and bringing back traditional values. All right, ladies, we have a wonderful guest today. And Victoria, take it away. All right, guys. So my good friend, Will Moore, is on with us today. Will and I are on the executive team for the Guilford Young Republicans. Uh, We met through getting involved in the local party, came to mine and Sebastian's wedding. I think he's known my husband longer, too. Um, But yeah, so Will's a graduate of Guilford College So and a huge Clemson fan. We bond over Clemson football. You know, it was a depressing loss the other week. But, um, yeah, so, Will, tell us about yourself. Um, where'd you grow up? Uh, how did you get involved in the Republican Party? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Still a little emotional from that loss. But um, <laughs> we'll lose, go Tigers, no matter what. Um, <laughs> still all in. Um, yeah, I, like uh, Victoria said, I was – originally connected with the Republican Party through um, my connections with the Guilford College Republicans. Uh, for my last two years, I was their chairman. Um, I got involved with politics through there. Um, got really active with the local on the county level politics. Um it actually got me connected to the Mitt Romney campaign back in 2012. Um, and I had a pro-life connection um, from the debate that we had in 2012. It was the college Republicans versus the college Democrats. And because it's at Guilford College, we had um, the college like socialist or something like that. Um, debating different candidates and like the issue of uh, Planned Parenthood came up and um, my lack of information at that time um, for the issue of like abortion and bioethics and um, Mm -hmm. but my passion for the issue kind of pushed towards each other uh, towards getting connected to national right to life with um, everything that they do with their academy and um, eventually led me to um, do work with them when I graduated in 2014. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that I need to cover? Any other questions? So or? you went from uh, um, college to the NC Right to Life. You haven't had any jobs, any kind of jobs between that? I've worked my way up from... I remember before I graduated in 2014, I worked like 10 or like $10 an hour, 10 hours, Mm -hmm. basic um, entry level. Hey, can you work on our social media? Hey, can you work on this? As most of us do. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Sounds like the political path. (laughs) Yeah. And then expense to, hey, I know I've done these studies. I can, um, increase our statistics and help uh, with this and kind of work my way in and looking around at uh, different things that the organization is doing and ways that I could help. Mm -hmm. Um, I've always said, if I feel like at the end of the year, I'm not really being of value to the organization, I would always quit. Yeah. Be an asset than like a leech. Um, Mm. But yeah, that's kind of the situation where I currently am. I'm good. Okay, so I have a question. Um, so you said you got interested because you didn't know a lot about abortion. Would you have considered yourself pro-life at the time? Or was it just like, eh, I guess. Part of the party platform. Right. Um, now, again, I work, I'm currently the assistant director for North Carolina Rights to Life. So I have to say that. Um, in addition to me being my, my personal party affiliation, um, the organization that I work for um, has not just Republicans, but Democrats, independents. Hmm. We, yeah, no matter what background, um, if you're Christian I like that. or not. Yeah. Yeah. It, if, as long as you're a North Carolinian. Um, it's a human rights issue. Everybody should be on board. Yeah. And we're willing to work and 
um, study and express all ways of knowledge, um, including science as well as biblical information. Um, it's all relevant and it's all um, important. Uh, sorry, Do you find the people who are Democrat or independents, do you find them voting pro-life or do you find them still voting with their party? Um, so for Republicans, um, well, I guess you said there's, sorry, there's people involved uh, in the NC right to life. Like that are Democrats. So yeah, do they vote for pro-life or do they vote with the party? Would you say, uh, a lot of the individuals because of the nature of the organization, um, are focused more on the issues of right to life issues. So abortion, mm -hmm. euthanasia, assisted suicide, uh, denial of treatment concerns, um, oh. than someone that would be like a libertarian that might not have pro-life leanings. Um, it's just the nature of the organization. Um, so tell us a little bit more about the NC right to life. Is it, so it's not just abortion, is it other things as well? Or is it just talking about abortion? So when we talk about pro-life, uh, the industry or the um, whole field of pro-life stuff, I know we were talking with um, Mal before this podcast started about her work with Students for Life. Um, there are a lot of organizations doing a lot of different things. Um, our focus is on education and public advocacy around the issues within what we call our scope of focus. So that would extend to uh, the womb, to a natural death. Ooh, I like that, yeah. And and uh, suicide and infanticide and denial of treatment issues that would lead to assisted suicide. That's interesting because anytime someone talks about like pro-life, right to life, they only think of an abortion. I never knew it also did stuff once you're out of the womb. So essentially, like, like you said, like essentially like once we'll like we support natural death. Yeah. Best way to put it. Never thought about that. Right. Um, so a lot of the stuff that we works, work on deal with the intent of keeping um, or the goal of having um, protections for everyone's life, whether you're super young, whether you're super old, whether you're super wealthy, whether you're super poor. Um, we mm -hmm. believe, like Mal was saying earlier, um, that this is a human rights issue, um, whether you make a lot or whether you don't, whether you're a foster care child or whether you're not, um, your life um, is one of the foundations of your rights. And if you can't secure your right to life, it's very hard to secure any other right. Yeah. So, so what all do y'all do? So you said like education, advocacy, right. what, like, what does that entail? Like, if I were to come to you today saying, hey, Will, I want to volunteer for NC Right to Life, what kind of options would I have as a volunteer? Right. So North Carolina Right to Life is a state affiliate of uh, National Right to Life. Um, so we work on the grassroots effort to get the word out. Um, if we're pushing, for example, this year, we have an agenda of four different bills that I can get into later. Um, educating people about the uh, specific bills that are coming up, um, why those bills are important, why the issues are important. We believe in not just pushing um, all this whole standard of a right to life, uh, but being able to walk with people and educate people on how to speak on the right to life issues and kind of structuring the bills that we have to kind of educate people on where, for example, the state of North Carolina is and where we can move from there mm -hmm. um, and why uh, laws like dis uh, around dismemberment abortions or uh, pain capable abortions should happen um, and the scientific evidence uh, thereof we work on the state level. We have things like we'll get into later the um, rally in March that's coming up this upcoming Saturday. We have the we have fair booths. We have um, 
a Camp Joshua program for oh. our high schoolers um, where we teach high schoolers across the state. This year, it's our goal to have, as soon as COVID hopefully uh, winds <laughs> down, um, we'll have one in the mountains, one in on the beach side. Uh, it's a three-day camp to have information. It's basically like a pro life boot camp try to throw as much information at you as possible and um, you leave with a binder and a whole bunch of information and networking and friends and resources to um, inform yourself there um, we have our state headquarters on Rehoboth Church Road that has a library of information um, and regarding to the information I just spoke about as well as uh, we have brochures, books you can check out. Um, we've been up since 1973. I know a lot of our stuff needs to be digitized now, but we have like VHSs, DVDs, um, you name it. We've, we've had a version of it. Um, oh, wait, I just thought of this. So you say you have VHSs and DVDs. Does that mean you need a volunteer to help turn all that digital? Yes, one of the big efforts. Y'all hear that? Before, Everybody listen. <laughs> yeah, is digitizing a lot of our stuff. Um, we are working also to um, revolutionize our chapter basis. We have chapters across the state right now um, that meet, uh, I think the requirement right now is once a season. Uh, well, that was before COVID. Um, and what does the chapters do? So the chapters are just like we are a local or more local based um, organization than national is. Our chapters actually help organize on more of a localized level than we can. Um, getting in contact with people in the area, coordinating events. I know um, there are um, Alamance County Right to Life is planning a prayer vigil um, on the 22nd. I know that um, there's a couple of other chapters that work on praying outside the abortion clinic. I know New Hanover Pro-Life Council does some of that. I know um, Caldwell helps us out with our camps as well as um, just trying to get information out holding events where we can have it, I guess on the left, they would call them teach-ins, but we have like actual presentations where we come in and give people information where they can e at least come in and listen, um, get the information, be able to distribute that information, be able to coordinate on a more local level um, that's more relevant, to be honest. Yeah, I've been to one of those. It's very informational. So, uh, go ahead, Mel. Oh, I was going to, okay, so this is kind of like circling back, kind of sort of to the question I asked earlier really quick. When you were doing research, so like you said you weren't really knowledgeable of, of the topic, when you were doing research more about it, like where did you turn? Um, so my basis for being pro-life, um, when I went to, when I was in high school, shout out Breezeville High School, uh, <laughs> Home of the Rams. Uh, we're also the football state capital in North Carolina. We have the most <laughs> championships in football. Not bragging, but yeah, yeah, true. <laughs> um, when I was going through high school, um, I remember cracking open a biology book and seeing that it was a biological fact that human life begins within the womb, um, if you wanted to look at and, and there's other sources. I know you, if you go on North Carolina Rights Life's website, there's a um, there's a part under the issues section, the unborn life. There's a clear line of information and uh, scientific um, sources you can look up from there. Um, but when I was trying to get information on what does it mean to be pro-life, my my information began and ended there. Um, I just thought it was like a closed book. I mean, that's where life begins. And if you're going to have to start a line or a timeline of rights, it kind of has to begin there. Uh, didn't really look more into that issue. I was kind of shocked um, later on in like 2012 when the issue of Planned Parenthood came up and uh, felt like I was a minority on the issue. 
Uh, but really, yeah, I mean, well, liberal campuses. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, you get in a certain room and everybody's talking about politics. Mm -hmm. Typically, leans one way. Um, mm -hmm. And there are liberals that are pro life, not to ignore them, but yeah. Um, and there are some in that are conservative and in the Republican Party um, that will say, you know what, I can't tell, especially like people who identify as libertarian, I can't tell, or I'm personally, or I have exceptions. So it's not completely out of the realm, I guess. Yeah. And there are some politicians that lie that say that they're pro life and they're not. Which is mm, a whole good point as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so what does a Joe Biden administration, what is that going to look like for pro-life? It's going to be as difficult as it was when Obama was president. Um, there's a lot of Yikes. things that we can't pass. Um, there's a lot of, um, it's going to be harder to pass on the federal level. Um, without a Joe Biden reaching into his um, prehistoric pro-life, um, there's going to be some things that um, President Trump uh, reinstalled, for example, the Mexico City policy um, that would fall into question now um, into the administration of Joe Biden on how pro-life or how not pro-life he is um and that just remains to be seen i know um he stated uh, many concerning pro-abortion stances um i know he's he's got a questionable stance right now on the hyde amendment um which if you guys don't know the hyde amendment relates to a federal funding towards direct abortion funding um mm -hmm. So there's a lot of those things that are very concerning right now. Um, but there's still hope and there's always a need for educating people on the issues. Um, there's, I mean, there's a lot of bills. Uh, I remember when I first came into um, North Carolina Right to Life, it was right after a wave of successful bills being passed. And I met a lady that's passed away now, but a lady by the name he still that uh, lost her daughter because while well, her daughter was pregnant, I mean, she lost her daughter and one of her grandchildren because um, the father didn't want that child to be born. Um, and what she was telling me and what the previous president of North Carolina Rights Life was telling me was that in order to have protections for um, unborn children like have in the state right now where at least in North Carolina if a child is killed in a felonious act then um, that child's life is considered under North Carolina law um, that bill took a de over a decade uh, of, av of advocacy where you're talking to people you're educating people you're warming the ground and you're uh, warming people's hearts and minds so when bills are ready for it to, when I mean ready for it, I mean ready to be passed. Um, mm -hmm. People have the information and it's hopefully a no-brainer by that time. Um, but there are things like last year we had a bill on unborn, well, it was abortion. The bill basically said that um, if a unborn child was to survive an abortion, then... Um, you should give that baby the same level of care you would give any other baby at the same gestational age. Um, and we had a huge fight. We actually, the governor, that's the governor, um, is going to be a governor again, um, vetoed it. Of course. And we got to override in the Senate, and we didn't have enough votes in the House to even override it. So mm. uh, I, I have a quick question. Um, yeah. So other states have been doing similar things. What has been the argument for not allowing um, or not trying to give these babies protection? Like, I don't understand, like, why that's controversial. You want to know some of their arguments? Yeah, some of um, their arguments. Like, maybe one or two. They've argued that 
some of the bills being produced is strenuous toward rights of the abortionists to do whatever they see fit. Um, there's the standard argument that abortion should be seen as a, uh, a choice between the abortionist and the mother. Um, so, yeah. Okay. Because to me, it just seems like a no-brainer. Like, if the baby is alive, then, like, you know, and, do no yeah, harm. And, <laughs> yeah, when I was in a lot of the committee hearings, there were a great you know, of abortionists being sued because of the reality of what they do. Um, which, I mean, if you don't like the work, then, yeah. Yeah. So you you said when you came when you got involved with the right NC right to life, a bunch of bills got passed in 2012. Right. What do we need to do as activists to set it up to where it is easier to pass bills and get these types of bills through? Is it getting the House and the Senate back for the Republicans? Is it more from the state level, making sure we have the supermajorities in the state level? Like, what do we need to do as activists? To get these bills passed right so um i'm just gonna be honest there's a long hard fight that's ahead of us mm -hmm. um but it's always been a long hard fight um so i want to get your hearts and your minds <laughs> steady on what's <laughs> ahead because i don't want to again i don't want to lie to you um what needs to happen is and one of the things i see that is a special opportunity for activists is the level of information or the um, amount of information that it's out there um, that we can distribute. So becoming a member of North Carolina Rights to Life, we give information out um, through emails and through our newsletter, at least once a season, updating you on what we can do, what's coming up, how you can get involved, what are the statewide uh, stuff that's going on and I think it also helps us connect you to those chapters so you can get more involved. Um, that would be the first step, just becoming a, a member of North Carolina Rights Life. Go through um, our website. We have a ton of information there. We have another uh, report that we do every year called Abortion in North Carolina, where we look at the statistics, the mm. laws, the polling, um, and put it all together in one brief document that you can review. Um, so informing yourself is the first thing. Um, informing others is another thing in order to change polling um, that deals with hearts and minds. So in order to do that, you have to make sure that you know what you, what you mean um, and, and using that to articulate that and be able to understand where other people are coming from and address those concerns. So. There are more pro-lifers in the state. Awesome. Go ahead, Mel. Um, and really quick, um, it doesn't have to be a long sentence or anything. Can you tell us um, the four bills that are coming up? You were That's saying or something like question. that. That's my question. Oh, look at us. <laughs> so uh, these bills don't have numbers yet, but uh -huh. uh, there are a couple of bills that we've um, introduced in the Pass the first one is called the Pain Capable Unborn Child Protection Act. Okay. So this deals with the scientific evidence that babies can feel pain before, uh, or at least at 20 weeks uh, post fertilization. Um, in the state of North Carolina, there used to be an amendment to the general statutes that said basically in the state of North Carolina, it would not be illegal for a woman to have an abortion past 20 weeks. Um, that bill was uh, enjoined by a federal judge, um, but we know that this bill um, has passed in other states um, and has been successful in, in comparison to the uh, state amendment that was passed due to the compelling interest of the pain of the unborn child. Um, we have a born, again, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. Um, that was a big fight if, if you've ever uh, 
looked at any of the bills that we tried to pass in 2019. That was the biggest fight that we had. Um, a second chance for life deals with the abortion pill reversal, where if a woman takes the progesterone um, pill, it was just like the first pill of the RE486 uh, procedure, um, she can take my Pristone, which uh, is a progesterone reversal process. Um, this bill would notify a woman on um, about this bill, uh, this procedure, and get her connected to a doctor or nurse that um, that knows about this and is willing to help a woman reverse the. Uh, abortion, the first abortion stage. Um, there's also unborn, the unborn child protection from dismemberment. Um, the official name for dis dismemberment abortion is um, dilation and evacuation abortions. Um, we know that in 2017, 3,297 of the abortions happened just within that year, just within the state. Oh, um, wow. So, making protections for that, uh, for those babies that experience that procedure um, would be effective just by getting that bill passed. Um, and yeah, those are the four big key bills that we hoped to get some kind of lead way on. Um, and there's more information on our website at uh, it's the first letters of North Carolina right to life in CRTL.org. Awesome. Um, yeah. This was good. Um, I guess our last question, or do you have any others aside from the March for Life? Bit? No, we just need to talk about the March for Life. That's this okay. Saturday. Yeah. So um, just tell us a little bit about like the plan, if people want to go, what they should do and what they should expect. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I've stated that North Carolina has been up and going since 1973. Um, before 98, we had been um, marching and doing rallies around the right to life issue. Um, and every year, basically since 1998, we have been consecutively um, marching. So this year would be the 23rd year. Um, so for 23 years, we've been marching peacefully, um, respectfully, um, with permission from the city of Raleigh, as well as the, gov well, the state government. Um, yeah, this year we will be at the Bicentennial Plaza, which if you're aware of where the North Carolina General Assembly building, main building, mm -hmm. um, it's right in the front in between the two new um, again, there's more information about that there on our website. If you go to the events section, um, the rally and March for Life. Um, this year, we're having the newly elected Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson coming and speaking. Yeah, he's North Carolina's first Black um, Lieutenant Governor. Has a very interesting backstory about how um, he was born, tough family. I'm um, from Greensboro, North Carolina. Um, I know Victoria and I are live in Greensboro right now. Um, so a very inspirational story about how mm -hmm. uh, his mother was very influential to his life. And um, yeah, it's gonna be a very good talk. Um, we are asking for people to uh, bring a mask. If you don't bring a mask, there'll be a mask provided or a mask available. Um, we will be socially distancing. Uh, we have a system of like tables that you can come up and take a program, take an example of our newsletter, take um, a mask, hand sanitizer, um, and we'll have uh, national right to life stop signs out there as well. Um, we're asking people to socially distance, so stay the recommended six feet away from other people that um, are not your party that you come with. Um, but from one to four, there'll be multiple people getting up there. Uh, I know 
uh, Tanya Baker Nelson is coming up. Uh, she's the CEO of uh, Hands of Hope, which is a local pregnancy resource center in Ooh. Raleigh and Fayetteville. She's doing the invocation. Um, I know, I think Mark Walker will be there uh, to introduce Mark Robinson. Um, Dr. Pincus, which is um, the new president, this is his second year in North Carolina Right to Life. Um, he'll be there speaking about what we have and some of the plans that we have coming up. Um, like to get involved, there's information on our website. Uh, show up, uh, be socially distanced. If we encourage you to stay at home. Um, we're working on ways to stream right now it looks like we might be able to stream on our uh, youtube hmm. website but yeah and to get more information stay in tune to our social media and our website we'll have more information as that develops awesome so is raleigh making you guys have like a cutoff like you can only have like so many people there or they haven't um so is it going to be out? It's going to be outside, right? It's going to be outside. Yeah. yeah. So they yeah. can't. Uh, we, do we've, that, can they? we've had to have a lot of conversations with this. Um, it's not going to be, it's going to be very similar to what we've done in years prior. Mm -hmm. um, it's just the certification is different. We have the First Amendment right to march. Um, mm -hmm. and, I mean, it's going to be kind of hard to tell us not to march when this, the governor marched the same streets that we're marching. So, so. Um, our are we going, like, are we actually marching or is it more we're just listening? Like, are we going from, like, one part of the rally to another or? So there's a, uh, the exact march that we did last year and the year before that um, will be our, our march this year. Mm -hmm. um, we are planning to be the same peaceful people that we've always been for 23 years. Um, and, yeah, yeah, it'll be the same rally in March. Should I bring my own sign or do you guys provide signs? Oh, good question. You can bring your own sign. We'll have um, the, nor the National Rights of Life, uh, Stop Abortion Now signs there. I think uh, Students for Life will have some signs there. But if you'd like to bring your own sign, feel free to. Or um, people listening, you can get some gals together or guys too. Guys can be pro-life. And you guys can have a sign making party. That's fun. I've done yeah. that before. <laughs> Stay up all night eating candy and making signs. Yeah, yeah. Right. I know a lot, a lot of people make their own signs and bring them, and I'm always amazed by like the creativity and mm -hmm. uh, the things. I take I'm taking a lot of pe pictures and enjoy um, just seeing people's efforts. I know last year there were like a group of people that came as a band. Like there was a person with a saxophone and a drum, and yeah, so. <laughs> Um, as long as you're socially distanced, yeah, we encourage you to come and be, bring your peace and um, your presence, yeah. So this is my first march. Is there anything I should expect? Uh, it'll be a little bit different. We won't have refreshments. We'll try, we're trying to keep people separate but uh, present. Um, so stay warm. Um, I supposed to be cold. You to, yeah, show up. I don't know exactly what the weather is going to look like. It might, I don't think it's going to snow, but um, I'm <laughs> imagining it's going to be cold. So um, for people that are coming from other parts of the state, like myself and Victoria, um, wear layers. It's easier to take a layer off than it is to have a layer and be freezing for a couple hours mm -hmm. add a layer on that you don't have <laughs> yeah 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 just think plan on wearing layers and like throw another pair of layers on or mm -hmm. like put another scarf or a hat on um oh bring a phone battery pack a phone um yeah. charger uh portable charger uh, Portable charger, yeah. You know what yeah. I'm trying to say. And any pictures that you take, we would be happy to share on our website and our social media. We're always help, uh, grateful for any help that we get. Um, my email is W, first name, um, more, last name, 
at our website, ncrtl.org. So if you email me any social media stuff or if you have any questions, uh, feel free to email that web, that email. Um, and we can move from there, yeah. How early should I get there? Uh, we will be setting up hours before, so I would try to get there. I know the band's going to start around, hopefully the band will start around 12.30, so, I mean, 12.45. Uh, if you're coming early, um, if you're coming from far distances, I would try to get there a lot earlier. I don't know what the traffic's going to look like. Uh, this is the first um, March that we've done in COVID situation. And I don't know if the number is going to be greater. I don't know if the number is going to be smaller. I know we've received numbers or sorry, we've received calls from people saying that, hey, I usually go to the DC one, but because of COVID, I'm a little nauseous about the numbers. Um, we were like, hey, come down to Raleigh. We're definitely not as large as DC, but we would love your presence. Um, and the Bicentennial Plaza, I'm pretty sure you guys have been there. It's, mm -hmm. it's pretty open. Um, a lot of space. I mean, even if we have an overflow of people going to uh, the Halifax Mall that's on the other side, uh, we'd love to have you. Um, we've had communications with the city police. So um, it sounds like everything should be great. Just dress warm, have a phone, um, bring a charger if you got a charger. Um, Mask, sanitizer. Sanitizer, coffee. Um, a can-do spirit. Can-do spirit, <laughs> yes, yes. So my last question, what about parking? Where is parking? So the city of Raleigh works like this on weekends um all of the public um parking and all of the staff parking that usually is reserved for the uh like legislative aides and mm -hmm. our representatives and things like that are open so um if you go on the halifax mall which is on the other side of the uh, general assembly building um there's parking on both sides of that halifax mall um there's parking on the left and the right hand side of the, there's a few parking decks out there yeah, if I recall just too. anywhere that's public parking uh, i sh i can assure you there's a ton of places awesome. um and we'll re release uh because we have a, a map showing all the places where you can park. But basically, um, there's like four or five different places that you can park for free. Um, if it says public parking, you can pretty much park there. Awesome. Mal, anything from you? No, this was very informative. I'm excited for the march to see you guys. And yeah, that's it for me. Yep. Thanks, Will. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah. Thank you so much. And thanks everyone for listening. Um, if you live in North Carolina or even the surrounding area, um, I highly recommend you go and get involved. Um, and I just want to remind everybody really quick to rate, review, subscribe, to um, get your t-shirts for this month's um, donation. Also, I feel like there's one more. Oh, and the summit to sign up for the summit. All of the stuff is going to be found on the website. And we'll also have some information about the March too on the website to, uh, yep. in, in the description. So you can go, uh, also reach out to any of us if you have any questions or anything like that. Yep, we'll definitely link all the information for the March on the blog post that coincides with this episode. And we look forward to seeing everybody on Saturday. Yeah. Bye. Bye, guys. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.